Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the 2020 Connoisseur competition, problem number five. I invite you to try it out for the minimum of 15 minutes, ideally 45, but not more than two hours. If on the other hand, you would like to go along with us, I suggest you take 10, 15 minutes, figure out what the problem is asking and put your first ideas out on paper. So now let's begin. So what this problem is, is we have a couple of piles of coins at the beginning, only one big pile of 15 points. And at every step, we choose a pile which has more than one coin, and we break them up into two piles of B and C coins, respectively. B plus C is equal to A, and we write down on the board A times B times C. And we do that until we have no more moves left. And the question is, what is the value of all the possible sums of these numbers that are written on the board at the end of the game? So the first thing I invite you to do, if you haven't done so, is to play around with not 15, because 15 is huge. There's loads of possibilities. Like even if you try it out, you will have a lot of possibilities. And the idea is not forget 15. Let's do two. Let's do three. Let's do four. Let's do, let's start with two, for example. So we have a pile with two coins and we can only break them up into these groups of one and one. And what do we get? We get two times one times one on the board. So for two, let's maybe call this a set of values. V of two is equal to the value two. That's the only final product we can get. Now, I invite you to take five to 15 minutes and find what V3 and V4 are. Now that I've given you enough time to pause for free, what we have? Well, we need to break it down into two and one, and then we'll write two times three times one, and then we break this one into one and one, and we write two times one times one. The sum for re three is going to be eight. It's the only, it's very deterministic. Now for four, we have two options. One is we break them up into two and two, and we shall write four times two times two, and then the twos are deterministic. We will have two and two. And the other case is if we break them into three and one, and now with three, deterministic, we'll get an eight. So first it's four times three times one, and then we get an eight. So what's the sum here? The sum is two times two times four, 16 plus two plus two, 20. And here it's 12 plus eight, 20 again. So V4 is also a set with 20. So maybe let's look at five. What options do we have? We have four, one, or we have three, two. In this case, we break them up into four and one. And what happens? Well, here we write four times five, and then we, we get V4, which is 20. So the total is 40. And in this case, we get five times three times two, which is 30. And then here we're left with V3, which is going to be eight. And here V2 is going to be two. So we're left with 40 again. So I mean, again, it's just one value and it's 40. Now, with these couple of games in mind, then I invite you to play with six, seven, maybe finish till 15, but play around a bit with this and try to figure out if you see any pattern. What is something that you may notice here? Take 20 to 40 minutes. And here's what I notice. So. Once you play around with n2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you get these numbers, 2, 8, 20, 40, 70, 112. And the thing I forgot to mention was that what I'm using here is the fact that once I split A into B and C, I notice that these piles of B coins and C coins have no effect on one another because we're always splitting now B into some coins, C, B1 and B2 and so on and so forth. Now the question for you is really there are two ways to go about this. One is for you to look at these numbers that you're getting and see if you can maybe guess a pattern from for n to vn. And the other way is if you can't really guess it directly, maybe you can try a bunch of functions of n for vn. You can try a linear function as it's done. a n plus b, does that fit this thing? And you can see it doesn't. And then you can try a n squared plus b n plus c for some a b c. Does that fit this pattern? Again, it doesn't. And then you can go to a n cubed plus b n cubed squared plus c n plus d. And does this fit the pattern? That's one way of going about it. 
But another way to like guess the exponent of n is to really see what is the recursive formula between vn and vn minus 1 if you have only one number. So for that case, like the recursive formula for vn plus 1 is equal to vn plus, if we break n plus 1 into n and 1, it's something along these lines. vn plus 1 is vn plus n times n plus 1. Though, mind you, this is only true if our guess so far, which is that vn only has one value, is correct. Otherwise, vn has more values. It can be va plus vb plus n plus 1 times a times b. And the one way to go about this is to solve this recursive formula and then check whether this is true. And the other way is just like directly get the formula and prove it by induction. But really, for me, I'll just tell you my logic here was, okay, this is 2, okay, this is just 2, this is 2 cubed, instead of 2 cubed, I was like, okay, this is 2 times 4, and then this here is 4 times 5, I'm missing a 3 here, I'm missing a 3 here, and this here, let's write it as 5 times 4 times 2. And then this here is 2 times 5 times 7. And here is actually where I got the whole formula. Is I'm missing a 6. I'm missing a 6. I'm missing a 3. I'm missing a 3 here. And I realized, oh, the formula must be n minus 1 times n times n plus 1 over 3. And I checked it to see for all the other ones. And here it also works out. It's 2 times 7 times 8 works out perfectly. So now the thing is, let's prove that Vn is equal to this. For this problem also, you could have gone all the way till 15, though it would have been just a lot of, lot of grunt work. But still, even if you wanted to go to 15, you still would need to notice that once you split A into B and C, these two piles don't interact at all. So now let's prove via induction that Vn is equal to n minus 1 times n times n plus 1 over 3. And we have the first couple of base cases. We have n equals 1, 2, 3, 4. Like v of 1 is technically 0. But we have the first couple of ones. Let's assume vn is true. And let's see what vn plus 1 is. Well, if we break it into a and b, it's going to be va plus. The b is going to be n plus 1 minus a plus a times n plus 1 minus a times n plus 1. Okay, maybe just for the algebra, let's go from n minus 1 till n, just so we have less things to multiply out here. So for vn, it's going to be va plus v n minus a plus a times n minus a times n. And now what is this? a, not a minus 1 times a times a plus 1 by strong induction over 3 plus n minus a times n minus a minus 1 times n minus a plus 1 over 3 plus 3a n minus a times n over 3. And now for this, the thing we need to do is a bunch of algebra, and namely multiply everything out. What do we have? This is a cubed minus a. I mean, everything is actually x cubed minus x. So this is n minus a cubed minus n minus a and this thing here is plus 3 times a times n minus a times n and what we want this to be now that you see these cubes sort of canceling out what we want this to be another way i'm looking at it is n minus a plus a cubed minus n minus a plus a this is sort of the thing i'm looking at like this is n cubed minus n, which is what we need to prove. But my question is, can we maybe force this to be this, complete a cube fast? And the reason I'm looking at it like this is because I have a cubed, I have n minus a cubed. I have this bit right here. So the only question is, is this the thing that's going to get out from the cube? So what are we missing? We are missing free n minus a squared a plus free n minus a a squared. But if you take in free n minus a, times a out, 
you'll get n minus a plus a, which is equal to n. So we have, this is what we have right here. So this is directly equal to this, which is equal to, and if you don't get it, you can just do the algebra yourself, but it's immediately equal to this. And from here, we get this is n cubed minus n over three, which is what we needed to prove by induction. So we know vn is n cubed minus n over three. And now v15 is going to be equal to what? It's going to be five times 14 times 16. And this is equal to, well, this is 32 times 35, which is 1024 plus 3 times 32, which is equal to 1120. So that's our answer. And as always, thanks for problem solving.